The San Diego police are investigating a sexual assault inside a restroom at De Anza Cove Park. Good evening and thank you for joining us. I'm Carlo Chiquetto. I'm Marcella Lee. Police say the woman was about to leave the restroom last night around 730 when she was attacked from behind and then sexually assaulted. The woman was found by someone who was passing by after the attacker left the park. Um, the victim went to the hospital for treatment for her injuries and the San Diego Police Department is currently conducting an active investigation. We're looking for a person of interest. That person is described as a dark skinned male with a blue mountain bike with black wheels and silver or steel colored spokes. Again, the attack happened here. These are images of that restroom last night around 730 in the women's bathroom at De Anza Cove Park. Anyone with information about who that attacker might be should call San Diego police. San Diego police are also looking for a gunman who opened fire at a Halloween party with teens. Police say a fight broke out at the Ava Apartments on Jewel Street in Pacific Beach around 3 o'clock this morning when a 21-year-old man was shot in the neck. News Ace Abby Alford spoke to neighbors who say they fear these rowdy tenants and worry it won't stop. A massive Halloween party advertised on social media led to a man getting shot inside this complex. Neighbors say that they've called police several times on these rowdy neighbors and they want them kicked out. A Halloween party with teens and early 20 year olds at the Ava Apartments in Pacific Beach led to chaos. My dog and I woke up at three in the morning fighting in the hallway. It's been going on all weekend. This neighbor who did not want to be identified says that she called police. They're screaming, screaming, screaming. We've heard the screams before, but this time there was a one gun shot. San Diego police say a fight broke out and a 21 year old man was shot in the neck and is being treated at the hospital with life threatening injuries, but is expected to survive. The gunman has not been caught. This type of violence uh, obviously hits a whole new level and uh, that's something that we don't tolerate and we're going to give every effort uh, at trying to bring this person into custody. Despite 30 to 40 people at the party, police say no one is talking. Parents were called to pick up their underage kids. I'm kind of speechless. <laughs> I didn't expect anything like that would happen here. But Amber and Nisa's neighbors say that they are all too familiar with the rowdy neighbors who right. hosted the party. I've called management many times about just the noise complaints. Neighbors say the young tenants are connected to fights like this by the pool earlier this year. They say there are parties until sunrise. Even someone pulled a knife during one of the gatherings. Ava is aware the police have been out here almost weekly, daily. Well, this location has prior calls for uh, parties and uh, a loud noise. Uh, and that's not uncommon down in the beach area, uh, but certainly we're going to work with the property management to address those issues. Frustrated neighbors believe it's the COVID moratorium on evictions that's keeping the troubled tenants from being kicked out. Ava shared they're working on it, but because of the COVID restrictions of evictions, the process takes time. Ava did not return our request for comment, but neighbors hope they'll respond to their concerns soon. I said someone's going to get killed here. Last week I told the office someone's going to get probably going to get killed here. If you have any information about this shooting, you can contact Crime Stoppers anonymously. An arrest could lead to a $1,000 reward. Thanks, Abby. Teams are concentrating on desert areas east of San Diego in their ongoing search for the remains of Chula Vista mother Maya Miliete. News 8's David Govertson traveled to the Anza Borrego Desert for a weekend search effort by Team Maya. Fish Creek in the Anza Borrego Desert is where relatives of Maya Miliete fanned out with about 30 search volunteers on Saturday looking for the missing woman's remains. Yeah, we are searching for a needle in a haystack. Um, the desert, it never ends. Maya's brother-in-law, Richard Drule, says the missing woman would off-road here with her husband, Larry Miliete, who has now been charged with his wife's murder. It's been almost 10 months since the mother of three was last seen. I mean, honestly, at this point, we're probably just looking for clothing and bones. The district attorney says Larry Miliete was driving a black Lexus SUV with a personalized plate Maylani on January 8th when he is suspected of dumping his wife's body approximately two and a half hours from the family's home in Chula Vista. Okay, do you have any plans to go out to Salt and Sea area or back to Glamis? Yeah, we're moving that way. We're moving eastward, northeast, uh, all that area, about two and a half hours from Larry's house. That's where we're focusing our searches from now on. Come on, mommy. 
Larry, Maya, and their three children went camping with relatives in the Glamis sand dunes the weekend before she went missing. This map shows the location of four Border Patrol checkpoints seen in red, equipped with license plate reading cameras. The route to Glamis on Interstate 8 avoids the cameras on the way out, but not on the way back, because the cameras only capture westbound vehicles. The main route to Salton Sea passes two checkpoints with cameras, but those license plate readers can be avoided if a driver takes northern routes through either Julian or Borrego Springs. Search teams started focusing on the Salton Sea area after Larry Miliete allegedly called his children from jail and told them to watch a movie called Shot Caller. The film makes several references to the Salton Sea with remote abandoned shorelines and vast wilderness areas surrounded by sand dunes. We'll be out here for the season until we bring Maya home to her kids. I drove from Julian to the Salton Sea on Saturday, and I can tell you there were a lot of campers and off-roaders out there in the desert. The husband, Larry Miliete, will be back in court on Thursday for a bail review hearing. And David, have police looked at those Border Patrol license plate readers to see if that black Lexus we've talked about passed through on January 8th? We asked Chula Vista police about that, and we assume they have looked at those cameras, but the police will not talk about evidence in the case. News 8 has put in a public records request with the Border Patrol to get access to that camera information. All right, the search continues. David Gofferson reporting live. Thanks, David. An increase in homicides as a result of domestic violence in Filipino households is the focus of a forum tonight at the Hall of Justice. The district attorney's office and San Diego police are taking part. We'll have a full report on the forum coming up tonight in our second half hour. A man charged with stabbing two homeless people and killing one of them has pleaded guilty. Forrest Brantley admitted today to fatally stabbing 55-year-old Robert Urbe in the neck outside of a 7-Eleven on Sports Arena Boulevard on Thanksgiving Day in 2019. A few hours earlier, he stabbed another man in the back and arm, also on Sports Arena Boulevard. Prosecutors say Brantley had posted on social media before the stabbings that he was going to, quote, help the homeless. The 40-year-old faces 33 years to life in prison on the murder and attempted murder charges when he is sentenced in December. Changing the theme a little bit, the Padres, they introduced a new manager today. One big difference compared to the last few, experience. Bob Melvin has managed the Oakland A's for the past 11 seasons. News ace Marcus Greaves joins us now with what Melvin had to say really today. Hi, Marcus. Easy. Guys, what's up? Yeah, this whole situation is odd, but at the same time exciting. I mean, it seemed like the Friars really needed a home run hire for their next manager. And to get one who is already a manager of a team is strange, but the fact that they got this one with this kind of experience is exciting. So Melvin will be the Padres 22nd manager. He is one of the most respected guys around MLB, managing in over 2,600 games, a very impressive number. And what folks should be even more excited about is it's the first time the Padres have hired a manager with previous experience since Jack McKeon. That was 33 years ago. So this guy knows what he's doing, and he has quite the he's quite impressed with the Friar faithful. I remember when we came here with the, when I was with the A's last season. We came here on a Tuesday night. There were 40,000 people here, and it was electric. You would have thought it was the playoffs, and it resonated with everybody in our, in our dugout. We're all looking around at each other going, wow. And that's before, like I said, the ballpark is fantastic. I mean, it is a true destination. Every team that comes here looks at the schedule. They say, when do we go to San Diego? And now with the, the fan base and the enthusiasm here and the roster, I mean, the roster is the real hook. So new manager, new beginnings. It's an exciting time for Padre fans, y'all. This is your guy. Be hyped about it because I am. <laughs> Hearing a lot of positive reaction for sure. Thanks, <laughs> yes. Marcus. Uh, we're learning new details uh, about the man accused of attacking a flight attendant on a plane heading to Orange County last week. 20-year-old Brian Shue of Irvine has been arrested and charged with assault and interference with a flight crew. Witnesses say it was over refusal to wear a mask. She was accused of punching a flight attendant in the face, forcing the plane from New York to divert to Denver, where he was taken into custody. He appeared in court today and bail was set at $10,000. He's expected to appear next in court in Denver, where charges were filed 
on November 15th. Meantime, some of the nearly 1,800 flight attendants on leave from an American Airlines have started going back to work, but it wasn't soon enough to prevent travel headaches. Three American flights set to depart from San Diego today were canceled, along with two arriving flights because of weather and staffing issues. Nationwide, the airline canceled 1,500 flights over the weekend. That was about 9% of its total flight schedule. A lot of people stranded at airports, missed their connections. Not going well this weekend. All right, lights, camera, action. County leaders want to bring Hollywood to San Diego. Supervisor Board Chair Nathan Fletcher introduced a proposal today to create a regional film office. It would work with local jurisdictions and act as a one-stop shop for entertainment studios for all of their filming needs across the county. They want to have one place to say we want to shoot at all of these locations and that place goes out and secures all of those permits. Coordinates the blocking of streets, coordinates the neighborhood engagement. Fletcher said the office would also create jobs and support local films and arts with added benefits for San Diego's tourism and hospitality industries.